Okay. So that was really good. And like, good to a degree that I hadn't really expected. Like, I knew that I would love the arc. That was kind of obvious. It's Gintama. And I knew going into it that it was a major story arc. Uh, this shouldn't be a crisis. And, but, I don't know. People don't seem to talk about this one as much as a lot of the other big ones. Beni Sakura, Yoshiwara in Flames, Four Deva, Shogun Assassination Arc, stuff like that. And so, when I sat down to watch this arc a few nights ago, completely blind, and I actually liked it a lot more than Beni Sakura. And, as you all know quite well, I loved that arc. So, I'm just like, impressive. So, the Shinsengumi Crisis arc, naturally starring the Shinsengumi, who have, by the way, really been sealing their show lately, from the Agyo arc, to the Okutomitsuba arc, even the Aoi arc. I mean, they always have. The Shinsengumi have always had some of the best episodes, but especially recently. Regardless. Because you can say that we start off with uh, two plot threads. Ito Kamotro returns to the Shinsengumi, and uh, Hichikata gets a new sword. A sword possessed by the spirit of an otaku. <laughs> and just the fact that we start off with this concept is completely hilarious. Because this, uh, his getting the sword has two effects. On one part, it's hilarious. Some, some of the funniest scenes in the series, just to see the demon vice chief crying over magical girls and begging the, uh, begging the Eurosia to help him get figurines and arguing with uh, Shibachi over whether it's better to devote oneself to 2D or 3D girls, regardless of their attainability. <laughs> it's a joy. <laughs> but it's also incredibly upsetting to see him slowly lose himself as the episodes go on, just so weak and cowardly, and we know what he's supposed to be. And of course, his last request to odd jobs, as himself being protect the Shinsengumi. Because Ito's return and Hijikata's subsequent dismissal from the Shinsengumi as a result of his uh, actions, his strange behavior, it causes problems. So Ito, he's, long story short, he is this arc's antagonist, and I'm going to end up talking extensively about him. But to start, simply put, he is a man of incredible ambition, and he has an intense rivalry with Hijikata, who rightly suspects him of treachery. Kondo, however, trusts him, or at least chooses to see the good side of him, as his intelligence and political prowess are something that the Shinsengumi really need. And so, just like we, uh, one of the opening scenes of the arc, they kind of, uh, Kondo and Hichikata have an argument over whether they should continue to trust Ito or not. And just like in this single scene, we kind of have the one of the central themes of the arc uh, summarized. So, like, when you have someone who you suspect, or who you are sure is out to hurt you, do you turn that person away, or do you treat them well in spite of that? Hichikata, of course, out of concern for Kondo, believes the former is the best course of action, and Kondo believes the latter. And they're both right, which is the brilliance of the air. Um, Hichikata is completely correct, and for a while the narrative really just points in that direction. Ito is terrible, honestly. He's going to kill Kondo, the sweetest, kindest member of the entire cast. He kicks Hichikata out of the Shinzakumi and pretty much ends up commandeering the entire operation out of nowhere, just like, dude, we met you an episode ago. How are you leading the Shinzakumi now? This makes no sense. And we as an audience can't help but hate him. The fact that he allies himself with the Keitai and seemingly has Yamazaki killed does not help him in the slightest. But then, scenes are going on, the Takasugi theme starts playing. And it's just like, you know, you know what's about to come, that things are about to get a lot worse. And of course they do, as soon as the Kiketai are involved, the real danger here is much more apparent, and it's definitely not Ito. So, Bonsai is really the only active member of the Kiketai here, Takasugi sort of off on his own, waiting things out. But he makes it clear to us that Ito is simply being manipulated. 
that in no way like lessens his culpability he's still doing awful things he's trying to kill kondo but <laughs> we realize that something is up that some there's more to the situation than there appears and then two things happen number one backstory but two what makes it really impactful is that the backstory is revealed as the Gehetai betray him. They just like, they cut in and out. And just the impact that this has, it's incredible. Just like, so we have Hijigata back, he just like overcomes the curse by the strength of his own little blah 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 blah, and he and Ito are fighting. Well, Gintoki and Banzai fight uh, over or elsewhere. And they to also sort of provide a little bit of narration for the fight. Banzai explaining how Takasugi is just manipulating him, how kids see right through Ito, so on and so forth. And the story, as for the story, it's incredibly simple, really. Just Ito is an incredibly intelligent and British as a child. He needs to prove himself to his family, who really doesn't care for him at all. So he tries harder and harder and harder, and succeeds, honestly. The guy's brilliant and talented at everything. But he remains lonely and unloved, and he grows better. Just like, what did I do wrong? I'm doing everything right, and I still have absolutely nothing. And what is wrong with the situation? And so, I'll show all of those guys who slighted me, those who couldn't recognize me, and all that I'm capable of. But the real impact isn't really in the backstory itself. It's sort of just like how it's relating to the events that are going on right now. For Hakusugi to take advantage of that, first of all, just like how far you have fallen, Hakusugi. And for Ito, in all of his intelligence and brilliance, not to realize that he was being taken advantage of. Like, yeah, his pride is probably warranted, but in a certain sense you really see how much it blinds him. Just like at the possibility of being acknowledged, he'll throw it all away, you know? And, but he doesn't realize it. And he does realize it, but not until it's too late. They blow up the train where Ito and Hichigata were fighting, and he is left just like hanging off of just like the train over a bridge and whatnot. And you can just see the fear and regret in his eyes. It's just like we look at him through like the barrel of a gun. And just like cutting in and out of his childhood and falls, just more of his thoughts. It's ultimately culminating in just like, just hold my hand, please, please. And as he was falling, I'm just like, Toshi, save him. Toshi, save him. Please don't let him fall. I don't care. Just grab his hand. Even if you just go on and finish your fight, that's fine. And then... Kondo. Marry me, Gorilla, please. <laughs> but if you just think about it for a second, you realize how perfect it was for Kondo to be the one to save him. First of all, what a shock it must have been to Ito even though it really shouldn't have been at all, because this is Kondo that we're talking about. But just the very person he was trying to kill, someone he reviled as a fool, it was to that man that he owed his life in that moment. Someone stupid and naive, just like the antithesis of himself, the type of person he completely scorns, but who was also so loving toward him and would never, ever shut him out no matter how many times he would push people away. And I'll admit that at this point, just the tears, the tears were flowing. <laughs> and there's just an extent to which uh, Ito, as a character, gets way too close to home for me not to come out emotionally wrecked. But they were good tears, very good tears. And so we see that Kondo sort of was right as well, just as Hichigata was, where Toshi was right in condemning him completely. Kondo was right not to turn him away, I think. Because in spite of all the c trouble he caused, it was that just unrelenting kindness that saved Ito. Who then dies to save them. He dies to save them. As if I wasn't ruined enough. He throws himself between them and a fire of bullets. And then, oh my gosh, at this point I was an absolute wreck. It was great. <laughs> and then they give him a samurai's death, just a last duel. Tichigata, surrounded by all of the Shinsengumi, and he just, he looks around, and he's finally really part of something, as he was, he just didn't recognize it, and he can die happy, and it's just, so good, it's so good, I know, like, when you, when you put it as, oh, he just wanted friends, it sounds so cheesy and cliche, but it was just executed so, so well, and it was incredibly moving, ultimately, so, 
um, some other notes. The Shinsengumi in general. I love them. I love them. Just like the bonds between them are so powerful. I'll uh, use Okita as a single example because I really haven't talked about him at all here and there are also just a million possibilities to discuss because there's so much in this arc even though it's so short. And I could just like go on and on about it forever. But uh, Okita Sogo. He is not really a uh, good person. He really isn't. Like, I love him, but he's really not. I mean, the cast of Gintama in general is not clearly divided in this regard in the slightest, which makes for some truly incredible, really believable characters. But Okito definitely pushes this in a way that a lot of the other characters don't. But throughout this arc, this and Nimitsuba arc, which was brilliant, by the way, if you know how I was saying that Shinsukumi has been stealing the show lately, that was that. Was that. But we get some more insight into him. How much Kondo means to him, especially. Like, why does he hate Ichikara? You took my sister and you took my Kondo. You're the vice chief, you're the last door protecting Kondo. Uh-uh. No, no, that needs to be me. This job is too important. Like, we get explicit confirmation in this arc that he wants to be vice chief. And that's why he arranges in part Ichikata's uh, dismissal from Machine Zagumi and why he allies him why he allies himself with Ito. So he can protect Kondo. And I mean, there's the personal dislike there, but it's definitely more about Kondo. Like I said, he's really not that good of a person, but there's an extent to which he really is just like elevated simply by his undying love and loyalty to this man and to the organi organization that they set up together. But you also know at the moment that he finds out what Ito is trying to do, Ito is going to die. He's going to kill him. <laughs> like, there's not even a question. But yeah. I don't want to get on this guy's bad side, ever, because Okita is scary. Like that scene where he just like took on like what ten other members of the Shinsengumi all at once, single-handedly, and just slaughtered them effortlessly. Like, wow, that was that was a chilling moment, really. But you just think about how much Kondo matters to all of them, just what this lovable idiot means to the Shinsengumi. It's just beautiful how dead set on protecting him first, both Hijikata and Okita were, but how he still constantly throws himself in the line of fire for his men, most notably Ito in this case. That of course being why exactly he is so precious to everyone, just that willingness, even though it's what they want to protect him from him so much. And just what an important role each of them play. Just like what a void there is when uh, Hijikata is missing from the Shinsengumi because of his uh, sword. <laughs> when uh, Toshi is welcomed back in the end, how much everybody needed their loved and needed their demon vice chief with all of his rules and regulations and bitter demeanor. But enough of the Shinsengumi. Oh, Banzai. Banzai is very cool as well. I love how he ended up sparing Yamazaki and letting his fight with Gintoki, which was amazing, by the way, go on resolve, just, just for his own reasons, you know? He was impressed by them, his opponents, by their music, or their song, or however you put it. I don't know, it was just like, some independence on his part? I guess clearly not what Takasugi had intended. And that I just really liked. It was great to see how chill the two of them were, just like, as they were talking about their plans not succeeding, like, Takasugi is not even mad at Banzai at all is great. Like, usually you'd have like the evil mastermind would throw a fit at this, but he's just like, drug. he's like, oh well, I'll have more opportunity to destroy the world, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I'm also sort of wondering what sort of relationship these two have at all, because Banzai seems to address Takasugi as more of, no, not quite, not quite, but still, more of an equal than do the other Kihetai. So I'm a bit curious. It's like, why have you decided to ally yourself with this guy Banzai? Because you don't seem to have that much of a reason to want what he wants. Like, are you friends? Do you like purple and gold kimonos? I don't know, but just curiosity, you know? Oh, I haven't even talked about the Eurozio yet, but it's getting along. Same as ever, I suppose. And uh, Gintoki just dishing out the wisdom as ever. He's great. I love him so much. But really, what's so impressive about this is that they managed to pack so much story, so much characterization, so much, so many meaningful thematic points into a mere five episodes to the point where I can't even begin to discuss all, all of them. Because most shows would take forever to develop this kind of thing, and I honestly usually like taking my time with it. 
because usually five episodes can't manage to generate such a story. But this did. King Talma did it. Which is something I find very, like, wow. It's so, and it's so King Talma. Like, this is a very episodic show. And so much of it is just like giving us these quick insights, these glimpses into the lives of people. So many different types of people. Hero, villain, everyone in between, usually in between. It's just, it's so human, this show, and it's, I love it. It's just, it, it's getting better as it goes on, and it's going to continue that way, right? Because that's what I've heard. And so excited. I can't say that Gintama is like my favorite show ever, because that's an incredibly difficult question, first of all. But I can definitely say that I can't think of another show that's more fun for me to watch, really. And, you know, what's up as far as reviews go next? Yoshiwara in Flames! This is the arc that everyone talks about. Like, when people are unsure about picking up the show, they're just like, hold out till Bunny Zakoda, but where it really picks up is Yoshiwara in Flames. That's, that's, that's what I keep hearing, anyway. And so my guess is that it's going to be another Takasugi arc, as I've decided to dub all of the major plot arcs Takasugi arcs, even though he doesn't really do much other than pull strings behind the scenes, but because things really only begin to actually fall apart when Mr. Uh, I want to destroy the world and everything in it comes along. But hey, I'm not complaining. Also, Kamui and Tsukiyo will be showing up in this arc, I believe. I've heard a lot about both of them. Kamui is uh, Kagura's older brother that we heard about during the uh, Uyubosu arc. And I have been recommended to do live reactions for 142 and 143, if I'm keeping track of everything correctly. And if there's anything else that anybody would like to recommend, just let me know in the comments. They're always fun to do live reactions and such. And I do really hope that all of you seasoned Gintama fans are enjoying watching a newbie going through all of this. I hope it's providing you a little bit of entertainment, and best of luck to all of you as you go through those new arcs I see you all crying over. Hope to catch up with all of you soon. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.